Let's try one more of these ice table examples. So this time we have some hydrogen and chlorine being put into a flask to make some hydrochloric acid. Let's do all the concentrations of all the chemicals we were given information about. So the hydrogen in the beginning, we took 0.2 moles worth of hydrogen. Oh, I should label this with a little I for initial. Uh, we initially put 0.2 moles worth of hydrogen into that two liter flask. So the molarity of the hydrogen in the beginning is 0.1. If we do the same thing with our chlorine, initially we put 0.4 moles worth of chlorine into that same two liter flask. So its molarity would be 0.2. And then underneath the balanced equation right here, it gives us some information about hydrogen at equilibrium, that there are 0 0.060 moles of hydrogen in that same two liter flask. So the molarity of hydrogen at equilibrium would be 0 0.030. Now let's plug all these numbers into an ice table. So I'm going to re just rewrite that equation and then put our ICE acronym down the side. And let's plug in what we know. Hydrogen initially is 0.1. Chlorine initially is 0.2. The hydrogen at equilibrium is 0 0.030. 0. And we know that all products in the beginning, unless it tells you otherwise, the reaction hasn't started yet, so you don't have any hydrochloric acid in the beginning. This is all the data that were provided. Now we have to solve for the rest of this table. So I'm once again just going to switch colors so you can see the difference between what we were told versus what we have to solve for. So if hydrogen in the beginning was 0.1 and at equilibrium it's 0 0.030, this means that the hydrogen came down by 0 0.070. There's an imaginary one to one ratio between hydrogen and chlorine. And so the number for chlorine is also going to be 0 0.070. Because it's on the reactant side and reactants always decrease, I'm going to make this a subtraction. 0.2 minus 0 0.070 is 0 0.130. Now, here's where we're gonna change things up just a little bit. For that hydrochloric acid, we know it's gonna increase because it's the product side, but there's a two in this balanced equation, which means the change for the hydrochloric acid is going to be twice as big as the reactant side, which both have ones on their side of the balanced equation. So we have to do two times 0 0.070. The change is doubled because of that two. So in other words, that means that our hydrochloric acid equilibrium concentration would be 0 0.140. So part A up above asked us to find the equilibrium concentrations of all reactants and products. Right here, here's your part A. There's your equilibrium concentrations. All of these guys would have units of capital N. They're all molarities. So there's part A. Part B, when we're finding the KEQ, we always do products over reactants. So we have hydrochloric acid as our product. We have to square that hydrochloric acid because of that two in the balanced equation. So the two from the balanced equation, it shows up two times, once in the change line and once in your equilibrium expression. Then we have our hydrogen and our chlorine, both to the first power. 
Now we substitute in our values. Hydrochloric acid is 0 0.140. I have to square that over 0 0.030 and 0 0.130. When I go to plug that in my calculator, I'd get a value of 5.0. Part C, wanted to know, is this reaction as written, reactants or products favored? This one is going to be a products favored reaction. And we know this because the KEQ value is greater than 1. On the next page, there's a problem for you to try it and you to solve. So here would be my suggestion. Hit the pause button right now while you're watching the video. Try the next problem on your own and then come back in just a second. Unpause the video and see if you did it right. So I'm giving you a second. Hit pause. All right. Now that you're back, let's see how you did. It told us the molarities of these guys, so you didn't have to solve for the molarities. It already told you the, the molarity itself. It didn't give you moles and liters and you had to solve. So you could just plug in that 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.070 0 just right into your ice table. Then you would find your equilibrium concentrations of all reactants and products. So the one that you know you went from zero for the ammonia up to 0 0.070, so it went up by 0 0.070. But that change number is going to be twice as big as the change number for the nitrogen because of that two to one ratio. So if the change for the NH3 is 0 0.070, the change for the nitrogen would be half that much. Then when you look at the hydrogen change value, there's a couple different ways you could think about this. You could either triple the change value for the nitrogen, so 0 0.035 times 3, or you could do a one and a half times as big change from NH3 compared to hydrogen. So if you do 0 0.070 times 1.5, you'd also get 0 0.105. Reactant side always decreases, product side always increases. There's your equilibrium concentrations, that equilibrium expression, the one, the three, and the two, those numbers show up in the change line and in the equilibrium expression. So we have to square the NH3, we have to cube the hydrogen. When you solve, you'd get 67, and this would be a products favored reaction, and you know that that's true because your KEQ is greater than one.